All right, my SoFlow TV audience, watch this. The summer is here again, you know, and we want to make summer 2023 a summer to remember. No other party this weekend, bigger than, better than this. Donna presents her annual all-white birthday celebration. This one is called Fashion and Bottles. All right. DJ Crime on the ones and twos, Saturday, July 8th, 2023. Right, yeah, so... 258 Priscilla Street in Bridgeport, Connecticut is the place to be. Don't miss it. Listen up. This one is a family affair. And them people here when them party, them not party normal, my friend. So, roll out this weekend, July 8th, Saturday. Seeing 258 Priscilla Street in Bridgeport, Connecticut, the place to be. Fashion and bottles. Step out in your whites. Meet me there or beat me there. Yeah. Tonight's a year night. I put today a face to have it all night. In my ceremony, I don't know represent for Donna. I know she presents her annual all white and birthday celebration called Fashion and Bottles. People want to come out for the one. Remember, this is July the 8th. Donna, I'm not telling a lie because yourself. You may say, you don't know, say. DJ by DJ Crime, I remember the place to be, Bridgeport CT, want to come up to the one here. A problem, that now them sell you out already, them can't sell you out again. Wicked out people, nothing good no come from them. July the 8th, Bridgeport CT is the place to be, you know, man. the queen said that. Remember the days when things was right, me and my family asleep on the one candle light. That is it, the queen said that. Ah. And red. Oh God. Welcome back to SoFlow TV again, everybody. It is your host with the most. Just go ahead and hit that subscribe button, please. Click the bell next to the subscribe button so you are notified every time a new video goes up on SoFlow TV. Right now, we're going to have a little talk. See? Listen, the summer is here and Jamaica is hot right now. Hot, hot. I believe the murder rate has reached over 600 gone already for the year. We're not talking about people who were killed in car accidents. We're not talking about people who aged out like elderly people who have passed away. We're not talking about people who um, are passing by from illnesses and all these other kind of things. We're talking about strictly murders. So yeah, it's another year and over two and to going on to three decades of Jamaica just bleeding out. See? And things aren't get, getting any better. Things are not going to get any better no time soon. I for one on SoFlow TV with my dedicated SoFlow TV audience have sat down before and put together a comprehensive, realistic plan that could be put in place to not just slow the murder rate but to actually hold government accountable so they do their share because remember you know if we're saying people always are blame government lord why the people them can't do better you got to remember this right in a society where there's chaos like there is in jamaica when it comes to the killing thing where there's such chaos it is up to the government to bring order into that chaos you understand so you can't depend on the people to lead and control themselves we should be people that can lead and control ourselves but in case you go out of bounds and you can't follow rules laws and regulations then government is there to do that i'm not saying that government can stop all these killings but what i am saying is we can start to actually bring people to justice the real people who are committing these crimes believe it or not i'm gonna make a broad statement right now and i want you to think about this deeply okay say for instance a year goes by and in that year that has gone by when we look at the end of the year the murder rate is 1100 and something Let's stick a pin and just say the murder rate in Jamaica was 1,100 this year. Okay, of those 1,100 people that were murdered, how many people do you think that the law brought in for 1,100 murders? 
Some of those murders, give or take, were two people killed once, double murder, triple homicide. So let's just say, on average, you have a thousand killers walking the island. Do you think that each year that we got a thousand killers in custody? No, we did not. We didn't even get half of them, my friend. So what does that tell you? It tells you that there's murder culture out there because people in Jamaica have realized that they can beat the system, that they can commit murder and get away with it. You have men out here right now who are bragging and women too who are out here that are bragging so them have three and four and five and ten dopey to them name. Serial murderers amongst us. You understand? I'm watching the news today is July 4th. The 4th of July in the United States of America and I'm glued in and tuned in to Jamaica's news. And I realize that the headline says, One, a former cop was gunned down. Alright. The next one says, Five women killed in the last three days. Or, yes, five women killed in the last three days as gang violence continues to do its thing wreak havoc on the country right okay these are not random killings i am now noticing that some people are saying stuff like people are flying into the country and in organized groups to commit killings to destabilize the country one thing about us is we refuse to take accountability there is no mercenary group that is flying into Jamaica that is killing off Jamaican people and flying back out of the country to destabilize the country to turn up the murder rate and all these things. Not Nagoso. What's going on is us killing us. You understand? That's what's going on. For instance, I'm here to tell you for all of the people who feel like these killings are just random. I want you to ask yourself. Do you think that two gunmen just ride up on a motorcycle and just pick you out of hundreds of other people that they pass and come find you out of everybody? They didn't rob you or anything. Them jump off the bike like they came for you specifically. They gun you down, jump back on the bike in broad daylight and ride away. They didn't shoot up anybody else well two more men in this ex-police case also got gunshots they were treated at the hospital and released but they were not the target you know how we stay already when it's war is war if i come for you and your friend them daddy your friend them can pick up some corn too right that's just how we operate now here's the thing with the guy who they said is used to be a police officer I'm hearing now, because you know the streets are talking, and you know sometimes the streets talk mere foolishness, and then it's up to us to pick the foolishness out of, you know, the sense out of the nonsense. But the story is going around that this brother, who used to be a police officer, him boxed down a girl. I believe it was in Portmore, it is said. Boxed down a girl in a, some event that was happening recently. And he left the island. He flew out. So apparently he has his papers, right? So he can fly out on him feel like it. So you know, man, and then there's a lot of people that are operating like that in Jamaica right now. They have their papers, so they can fly out. They probably have a green card overseas, or they have their citizenship. So they fly out when they feel like it. They come to Jamaica, them cause trouble. When the place get hot, them run, come back to foreign, and these kind of things. In his case, what I am hearing, I'm not saying it's factual, I'm saying that this is what the streets are saying, is that in box down a girl at a public event where a lot of people saw what happened, I uh, believe it was last week or a couple of weeks ago or something like that, and him fly out of the country. They've been looking for him and they couldn't find him. When him box down the girl, it is said that her family said they will go hell and high water to exact revenge on him. So now, that he's back in the place and you see two gunmen roll up upon motorcycle gun him down and leave you can put a connection there okay the women that are being killed 
I believe it's three in the last five days or five in the last three days. I don't know the numbers. But behind that, the police is saying it's gang warfare that's going on. Here's another strategy in gang warfare. When I come to your neighborhood, if I want to cripple your neighborhood, yeah, if I kill the youth, them, the children, them, you're going to cry, you're going to bury your children, but you're going to go on with life, and then you're probably going to come is exact revenge on me, because you're grown and you're able, right? If me kill the man, them, eh, won't be no more man to war with, but the woman, them, can always bring in next man, right? If I kill out the woman, them, it's always hits harder because you have to think about the position of a woman in a family structure you understand in most cases and a lot not a lot of cases and most cases yes there are these these women are single mothers to multiple children so a whole community feels it when them take away one woman out your community two women out your community three women out your community so if neighborhood a is warring with neighborhood B and neighborhood A goes over to neighborhood B and kill a woman and neighborhood B come back over to neighborhood A and kill a next woman for reprisal from over there that is the strategy that they're using behind it I know it sounds wicked and it is wicked but that's what is going on so for the people them who are saying oh I think these killings are just random killings and Jamaica is getting scary now very very few killings in jamaica are random jamaicans believe it are not my friend are not people ju that just randomly kill you understand gunman is gunman gunman in a gunman business bad man in a bad man business gangster in a gangster business and then you have law enforcement officials and then you have civilians who now are mixed up in none of that but at the end of the day they are all tied to each other this is why it is important for us to realize that right now you better pick your side and when i say pick your side i'm talking about get comfortable with cutting people off you know in life some people who you started this journey with like you look a brethren them where you grew up with them make a choice to become gunman and badman and all these things. You don't live in the community anymore. You have a right to cut them people off or to stay far away from them. You understand? You have family members that are living a certain kind of way. And you have other family members that are shielding them, hiding them when they do wrong, protecting them, lying for them, and all these kind of things. These are the people... That are getting caught up and of course you have innocent mommy and granny and auntie some of them really don't know you understand because some man respect their family so much that they actually really keep the badness away from them and them really don't know them really don't know that that's what they're them don't know the full extent of what their family member is into which can be very dangerous for you but for the people the jamaican people them who are par with your mad uncle or your mad cousin or your bad brother and you're not afraid to tell people yeah man my brother a gunman you know and you brag about it like these women these females my man my baby father a big gunman you know bad man that you know and they say it like it's something proud right until his adversaries and foes can't find him and they come for you then we have on the front page of our newspaper mother of four gunned down mother of two gunned down grandmother house door kicked in grandmother 65 years old with two grandchildren age 8 and 11 all executed these kind of stories come from things like these don't forget we're talking about jamaica and when the war gets serious the war gets serious you understand and we have a thing in jamaica that is called if you can't catch quaker you catch him shot or him shot tail or a jacket or a pants or something for those of you who don't know what that means it means if i cannot get to you i will start murdering your family members until you show up right if i can't catch you i'm gonna catch your grandmother i'm gonna catch your wife i'll catch your damn kids 
I'll catch somebody that is associated to you in some way. Now, the crazy part is when they're catching these family members, of course, the neighborhood is going to cry and say, Oh God, Miss Joan live around here 45, 50 years now. Miss Joan is known to cook and take care of the whole community. She not in or nothing, you know. Why them could have do this lady like this? But nobody is talking about Miss Joan's son. The one where them no set in a badness from how long. Nobody is talking about Miss Joan two bad nephew them were always in the community nobody is talking about her brother or her you know different family members who might have done things to people who people might be looking for and can't find them so them just catch miss jones listen to me and listen to me good you see your family members if they are involved in certain things with a certain type of people you need to get as far away from them as possible because those family members don't mean you no good. They don't mean you no good because if them are Jamaican and them know say we live by if you can't catch Quark or catch him shot, they know we live by this. A lot of the murders in Jamaica is from reprisal killings. Somebody killed somebody for me, so I'm going back to kill somebody for them. That's what a lot of the murders in Jamaica is about. And if they can't find the person that did the killing, they will find relatives of the person that did the killing. You understand? It is that simple. So, again, this new narrative that people are trying to push about mercenary groups are flying in from foreign to come kill people just to destabilize the island. That's a lie. That's us killing each other there. That is us that's killing each other there. Now, people say so flow. You always talk about the problem, but me not hear you talk about no solution. Maybe we need to do this all over again, right? One of the things that we talked about and we've been talking about for years is putting Jamaica in what we call a fishbowl. Why for the fish thing? Because we know how Jamaica feel about that already. A lot of people, fish don't mean swim arounds or the something we're swimming at the sea where you fry up in the pot and season it down and these things. But in my language I'm speaking now, I use this term fishbowl because that's the term that is used to describe cities in the world like the like London in the UK or like China in uh, Beijing or these kind of major cities in these places under heavy technology. Jamaica has a lot of money in it and a lot of people are pretending or, or I don't know they are of the misconception that Jamaica is a broke, poor, desolate country and only a few people have money well jamaica has enough money to set up a proper system jamaica has enough money to set up the D the national dna database jamaica has enough money to set up cameras on every main street cameras on every major building schools and government building and we're talking about up and down the street and on connected and joining streets and these kind of things. Jamaica has enough money to do all these things. And then they should implement something that's called putting all the cameras in one place. As in the monitoring station, a central monitoring point. Just like what they have in the UK. You know, this would actually create jobs. Meaningful jobs. Because when you ask a security brother where you, where you do for your living, you must say, yeah man, I am the one that man the cameras and communicate with law enforcement inside of one of those camera hubs. If you ever go inside of one of these camera hubs, you will see a big room. And the big room has about 150, 200 camera screens in there. That is their job. They are in contact with law enforcement 24 7 the cameras run 24 7 and the job position runs 24 7 that mean if i'm on shift and i'm inside of this camera room and i'm manning my cameras along with my partners who are working there we are man the camera them i will see something on jarvie lane we see a suspicious activity happening on jarvie lane we can call police on the ground already and say unit we need a unit over on Jarvie Lane there's a white Nissan Altima that is 
been circling this area for quite some time a guy got out and it seems like he's holding a weapon in his hand that looks like a rifle or something like that and out of the blue police can swoop down panjari lane right we don't have to sit around and keep waiting for things to happen and then we keep on acting like oh my god everybody is surprised again everybody is united in grief again everybody is on social media beating off their thumbs leaving comments again jesus where art thou lord save us we need you more than ever lord we need jamaica to fast and pray harder all that stuff is not going to do a damn thing for jamaica until government starts to step in now like I said before, the cameras won't stop anybody from killing, yet the deterrent will stop people from killing. See, I have a problem with the death penalty because corruption runs so deep in Jamaica from the government perspective. Let's just put it this way. From the top all the way down to the very last drop. From the head all the way down to the tail, corruption runs deeply in every organization, in every facet of our government, law enforcement, personnel, um, politicians, and so on and so forth. There is corruption. Until we can clean that up, we can't just say, yes, bring back the death penalty. Not when you're finding so many police officers being members of gangs. Not when you're finding so many police officers committing extrajudicial killings on behalf of some Don or some coke dealer or some big drugs man that paid them some money to kill people. Not when you're finding our own police officers transporting cocaine and being a part of illegal activities in the numbers that we are. These are the same people that will watch their police brethren commit a murder on behalf of somebody who paid them to do it and they will go grab Miss Matty's son and they will scapegoat Miss Matty's son and put him in prison and get him tried and set up and tried and convicted sentence and then off to the death penalty for him when the poor youth didn't do it it's just wrong place wrong timing them set him up and his family doesn't have the kind of money to fight his case for years to prove his innocence you understand so that is the reason why we need the dna national dna database and that is why we need hundreds and hundreds or thousands of cameras across jamaica with a central monitoring point around the place you understand once we get that in place we will now start to be able to bring people to court pull up these videotapes and say yes georgie this is you you see it and georgie can look at the camera and he can't say anything because we will see him right there on the camera now when we sentence him to death because he just murdered two people in cold blood nobody will have anything to say we will be absolutely sure that we're breaking the neck of the right person seeing so yes, government does play a big part and if they really want to clean up Jamaica, they're going to have to heavily invest in these two things that I'm talking about, right? Cameras everywhere with a central monitoring point and also uh, the national DNA database. The national DNA database will ensure that when somebody commits a crime, say in Clarendon, but they are caught in Spanish town that they will register in the system. That means as soon as police pick you up, they can run your thing through their system and they will see that you were involved in something in Clarendon and then pick you up from there. So right now, Jamaica doesn't have that. So what they have is criminals having free range. So the criminals have 14 parishes to move around and when one get hot, they move to another one and next one get hot then move to another one hey listen let me cut this video short right where it's at right leave this video knowing this majority of the killings in jamaica is connected to something it's not just no random killing nobody now just run up and two gunmen jump off a bike and just gun down any random person so everything is connected i'm gonna leave this one right here for now 
If you miss what I said in this video, then feel free to go back, play the video over and get a full understanding of what is going on on the island of Jamaica. We love Jamaica, you know. We don't love Jamaica, just the name of Jamaica and the flag and the color of the flag. We love Jamaica as in we love the people of Jamaica. We love our culture. We want a good Jamaica to be here even after we are gone from here to be inherited by our children and our children's children what we are going to left give them war zone eh what we are going to left give them think about it i'll catch you all on the next video it's so flow tv i'm out peace tonight for your life i put today a fierce habit all night in my ceremony, they know may represent for Donna. I know she presents her annual all white and birthday celebration called Fashion and Bottles. People want to come up for the one. You remember, it's a July the 8th. Donna, I'm not telling a lie because yourself. You may say, you don't know, say, DJ by DJ Crime. I remember, say, place to be Bridgeport City. Want to come up for the one. A problem. Donna, them sell you out already. Them can't sell you out again. Wicked are people. Nothing good no come from them. July the 8th. Bridgeport City is the place to be, you know, man. The Queen said that. Remember the days when things was right? Me and my family asleep under one candlelight. That is it. The Queen said that. Uh -huh. All right, my SoFlo TV audience, watch this. The summer is here again, you know, and we want to make summer 2023 a summer to remember. No other party this weekend bigger than better than this donna presents her annual all white birthday celebration this one is called fashion and bottles all right dj crime on the ones and twos saturday july 8th 2023 right yeah so 258 priscilla street in bridgeport connecticut is the place to be don't miss it listen now this one is a family affair and them people here when them party them not party normal my friend so roll out this weekend july 8th saturday seeing 258 priscilla street in bridgeport connecticut the place to be fashion and bottles step out in your whites meet me there or beat me there yeah.